Hello everyone today as we are getting ready to travel to Tallulah Gorge State Park in Tallulah Falls, Georgia. We want you to come along with us as we get ready to hike down the trails. When visiting Tallulah Gorge, you have numerous things for which you can choose to do. You can just peer down in the canyon, some 1,000 feet down from the top of the rim, visit one of the six spectacular waterfalls, climb down into the gorge on the never-ending series of stairs, and cross over the swaying suspension bridge across the Tallulah River that is some 80 feet above the river at the bottom of the gorge. But before you start on your journey, you should stop by the Tallulah Gorge Visitor Center and have a look around before starting on one of your many hiking trails for today. Here's a little information about some of the hiking trails. First, the most popular trail is that of the two and a quarter mile Hurricane Falls Trail. This trail will get your heart rate up as you descend down a number of stairs into the gorge to the suspension bridge and cross over the roaring Tallulah River. After a few more steps down, you will be at the base of Hurricane Falls. Then you will make a climb back up to the rim. This is a great workout. We decided first of all, after visiting the visitor center, that we would take in all the exhibits that were in the building. So we're here now in the Southern Appalachian Mountains, and we're gonna look at some of the things here and around Tallulah Gorge. We'll look at some of the rock and water situations. We'll look at some of the um, natural uh, wildlife and, and flowering plants of this area. So don't forget, while you're there in the visitor center, check out all the exhibits. We stopped off here again in the visitor center to learn more about the natural forces that help form Tallulah Gorge. A lot of good information, great pictures of some of the falls associated with the gorge. We're also going to explore the ecosystems around this area as well. So again, be mindful, check out all the many exhibits in the Visitor Center. Great learning experience. With all the hiking in and around here in Northeast Georgia, and particularly in Tallulah Gorge, it's always good to know before you go. There are numerous snakes in our area. Check your, out for your DNR or your county extension agency for the common snakes of Georgia. Before you leave the visitor center, be sure to take in the seven worlds in one, the natural environments of the Tallulah Gorge. Let's look at these. First, there's the upper slope hardwood community of a Southern Appalachian forest. Second, the moist rim and cliff communities where you will find the home of rare treasures, some unique animals.
The third community or in our environmental ecosystem is the dry rim and cliff community. A harsher environment on the animals and plants. The fourth ecosystem is the lower slope hemlock white pine community, world of many evergreens. community, so to speak, is the stream community, where you will find the rippling waters of the lower part of the canyon where the Tallulah River is still cutting into the earth. The sixth community or ecosystem is the river community. It's the heart of the gorge. Finally, the seventh community or eco niche, the lake community. It's the world of waters. And now you have it, the seven worlds in one, the natural environment of Tallulah Gorge. Seven different worlds unfold along the descent into Tallulah Gorge, from the high rocky rims to the cascading waters of the Tallulah River, each world shaped by the sun, water, soil, and rocks contains the plants and animals best suited to it. The dry rims and cliffs of Tallulah Gorge are teeming with all type of wildlife. From the mink to the river otter, muskrat, the beaver, turkeys are also in this area, the gray fox, the squirrel, and of course, black bear. They are many creatures, even including coyotes. The moist rims and cliffs of Tallulah Gorge include wildlife such as a bobcat, 
And again, don't forget those creatures down near the earth, such as the copperhead, that venomous snake of this part of Georgia. Always the deer population. Look at the little fawn here. And there, up top, are some red foxes. and another bobcat. You just saw some images of the suspension bridge down below at the base of Hurricane Falls. Other trails that you can take or other on this uh, adventure today, uh, you can hike the two trail combo of the north and south rim trails to see deep into the gorge depths and catch a sight of the Tallulah Falls waterfalls that you may see down below. These two trails are relative easy and a fairly level way to see Tallulah Gorge, most magnificent sight without doing a lot of climbing, hundreds of steps. Finally, for the real hiking enthusiast, you can go on the three and a half mile sliding rock trail. Yes, that is right, sliding rock trail. This hike requires a gorge floor permit, which can be picked up at the park's ranger desk. This is the most scenic, but also the most difficult trail. And yes, you will get wet, not from sweat, but from water. As the name implies, you can go sliding down a large rock formation from one pretty good sized pool of water into another much larger pool of water. It probably would feel good if I was down there on a hot day like today. If you choose this trail, go prepared for the whole day. And don't forget to bring some dry clothes. Well, here we are at the second overlook from the visitor center. Behind me is Hurricane Falls, the most famous falls here in Tallulah Gorge. You may be able to hear the rushing water. It's pretty loud, but there's a lot of people on the trail today and a lot of background noise. Just know, take your time when on the trail and make sure you bring water especially on hot days like today. But oh, what a beautiful sight down below. Up above, you can see another observation deck. From one of these is where the great Walenda made one of his two epic journeys across the Great Gorge on the high wire. For you young folks, you won't remember that. But for those of us that are my age, I remember it like it was yesterday. It was quite a feat for the great Walenda.
a high rope walk over the Tallulah Gorge. As we pan around the upper part here on the Tallulah Gorge, you will notice several dead or dying trees in the background. Those are hemlocks. Unfortunately, a few years back, a type of aphid came in and has attacked our hemlocks. We do have a way of preventing this. Unfortunately, it is expensive and you have to treat the trees every two to three years with a chemical that you inject into the trees. Unfortunately, as you see off in the distance there, many of our hemlocks are dying or are dead. As a reminder, not, you not only have to be in the park to be a litter bug, that balloon could have come from miles and miles away. So regardless of where you may be at, don't be a litter bug. Don't throw your trash away. Put it in the garbage can, which is where it belongs. Now that we're cranked up back in the van, we're gonna head over to the dam. And when we get there, I'll give you a little more information about the dam and how it came to be. Here we are, believe it or not, standing on the dam of the Tallulah River that created Lake Burton to my left and controlled the flow of water down the Tallulah River into the gorge. In 1913, a hydroelectric dam was built by the Georgia Railroad and Power Company in order to run Atlanta streetcars. Today, the dam is owned by Georgia Power and is still in use to provide hydroelectric power. The dam collects and redirects most of the water by a 6,600 foot long tunnel sleuth around the falls to an electric generation station. Downstream, some 608 feet lower than the lake behind me. They are a few days out of the year in which they release large amounts of water for recreational activities like kayaking and whitewater rafting. So now you've seen all aspects of Tallulah Gorge State Park. This is from the Northern Rim. That's where the dam is located. So I hope you've learned a good bit today. We are back to the office from our trip to Tallulah Gorge, and now we are going to travel down to southwest Georgia into the county of Stewart near the town of Lumpkin, Georgia. Here you will find another one of the seven wonders of Georgia at Providence Canyon State Park. Providence Canyon is a network of gorges that were created by the geological process of erosion. This erosion was caused by poor farming practices in the 1800s. The rainwater runoff from these farm fields led to the wearing away of the soft sedimentary soils of this area. There are some 16 canyons, some as deep as 150 feet. Providence Canyon is often called Georgia's Little Grand Canyon, as one can see the resemblance to that of the landscape from America's Southwest Grand Canyon in Arizona. There are several hiking trails which you can choose from to explore the Little Grand Canyon in Georgia. Now we will move on to another great wonder of Georgia, our very own Stone Mountain. Stone Mountain, which is located just outside of Atlanta towards the east, is quite a sight to see. Stone Mountain, in geological terms, is called a pluton. A pluton is an igneous rock formation that came from volcanic activity. The Stone Mountain pluton continues underground about nine miles to its deepest point. Numerous reference books and Georgia literature have called Stone Mountain 
the largest exposed piece of granite in the world. Stone Mountain is visible today because the softer earth's surface around it has eroded away, exposing the rock formation we call Stone Mountain. Stone Mountain rises some 825 feet above its surrounding area. At its base, Stone Mountain's circumference is more than five miles around. There are two ways for you to get to the top of Stone Mountain. You can walk up the one mile trail to the summit, which is 825 feet above the ground below. Or you can pay and ride up to the top on the Skyride cable car to the summit. From the summit on a good clear winter day, one can see more than 45 miles. Well, we hope you have enjoyed your journey today with us as we traveled to Tallulah Gorge, saw some great pictures of Providence Canyon and Stone Mountain. We hope in our journey, you have learned a little bit about these great natural wonders of Georgia. Don't forget to click on the link and answer a few questions about our journey today in order to get your points added for your summer activity prizes. As we close out our summer activity series uh, here in Georgia of uh, the natural wonders, join us next week when we learn about the final two of these seven natural wonders of Georgia, as we will venture to see two very unique natural occurring springs in Georgia and hear more about warm springs and radium springs. Take care and get out and enjoy Georgia's great natural beauty that is all around us. See you next week.